I'm Freeman Allen with Sustainable Claremont, and this is about the 95th in our series of sustainability dialogues. And uh, this evening, uh, I'm uh, pleased to have a presentation on the proper use of rain barrels. And following that, there will be a, a presentation on vector control for mosquitoes. Uh, and uh, the uh, initial speaker will be Cindy Berglund from uh, Rain Barrel Incorporated. And Carol Ann will be introduced by Cindy later on, speaking about uh, vector control issues. So I think without further ado, I'll just turn it over to Cindy. Uh, and thank you, Cindy. Thank you. Well, thank you, everybody. OK, can everybody hear me real good? Excellent. Okay. Hi, y'all. My name is Cindy Berglund, and I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina. So can y'all hear my accent here? Okay, now we're going to be really honest and truthful with you. I do live in Raleigh, North Carolina, but I grew up in Long Beach, California. So I went to Long Beach City, Long Beach State, and then we moved 25 years ago to Raleigh, North Carolina. So it is very nice to be home, and I do appreciate the invitation to come and speak. My company is called Rain Barrels International, and we were started in 2006 by um, my son, who was 12 years old at the time. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about rain barrels really quickly. I'm going to show you some pictures here just to kind of give you an idea. Uh, first, one of the big questions we get is, can you paint rain barrels? The answer is yes, and I've got some instructions here on how you paint them. Uh, this is the Laguna Beach City Hall right here, and they've painted the rain barrels to match their tiles. So yes, you can paint them. It uses a Krylon Fusion paint. The plastic itself is the color of the barrel. Okay, uh, so you can spray it with a Krylon Fusion if you wish to match your house, something along that line. I personally just leave them as is, and I can give you ways and suggestions to hide them. We'll talk about that. So yes, you can paint them. Obviously, we've got a customer here who really painted beautifully, and so she sent me her picture showing me her ability. I have no ability whatsoever in painting, so this is what you get. We've got a happy customer down here uh, coming to pick up the rain barrel on his bicycle. He happens to be the mayor of Burbank, so I thought that was kind of <laughs> cute. And then we've got a happy customer in this corner here buying eight pair barrels. I was probably happier than he was. And last but not least, back in the day when my daddy used to collect water in the 60s, he was considered the neighborhood kook, okay? Nowadays, if you collect water, you are the environmentally friendly person, so you are the cool person. So we had a client here in Huntington Beach said, see, I've got my barrel sticking right out there because I want the world to see that I'm collecting rainwater. So remember I said you can hide it if you don't like it. I suggest to people putting maybe chicken wire around the barrel, growing a vine up through the barrel. That way you can't see it. Uh, you can put a plant right on the top of the barrel and let it just drape down. It will need to be a a uh, plant that can handle quite a bit of water, um, but they do. You can just put the plant right straight in. It's okay if you get a little dirt in your barrel. It's not going to matter. And we've got a couple barrels here. This is a 51-gallon. I have on the truck with us today 51-gallon terracotta. They call it terracotta. I call it the orange pumpkin. Okay. Then we've got a 58 terracotta. I've got a 60 black and I have a 60 gray, okay? Now, the reason we call this our baby barrel, but a lot of people like to hide them under a deck or behind a fencing or behind a bush. They don't want it to be seen, so they like the baby barrel. Uh, it is 51 gallons, so it does qualify for the Metropolitan rebate. Okay, so let's talk a little bit real quickly about our company just to give you a little overview so that you know who I am and I'm not just some funny lady coming to you, talk to you about rainwater harvesting. The business was started by my son, Ryan. He was 12 years old, and he asked me what I wanted for my birthday. Now, 
when the builder built my house in Raleigh, North Carolina, he didn't put a faucet on the back of my house. So I used to have to drag this 300 foot hose all the way to the front of, from the front to the back just to be able to water my plants. Now that seemed ridiculous. And so Ryan asked me what I wanted for my birthday and I explained that grandpa used to have rain barrels and it wasn't an unusual new thing or anything. It's been around for, for ages, you know but that he had a rain barrel and that's what I wanted his daddy to get me for my birthday. Well, he asked, of course, the question, what's a rain barrel, okay? And so I explained to him that he needs to go look on the internet because let's face it, these kids all go and look on the internet to see what's out there. So he looked on the internet and he came back and he was all disgusted and he said, you know, mom, they're just too expensive. I'm gonna make you one. Well, my birthday came and my birthday went, and there was no rain barrel, and that was the end of it. Okay, so a couple months later, I came home, and there sitting in the yard was a rain barrel. And I said, Ryan, you got your daddy to buy you a rain barrel. And he, he looked at me, he goes, no, I made it, Mommy. And he goes, I was driving down the road, and there was a farmer, and he had about 20 of these barrels sitting there. And so I said, Daddy, stop. And so we stopped and we went and talked to the farmer. And the farmer explained to my son that whatever product comes from a different country that's a food grade product, it comes into the United States by way of Canada. And our companies dump the product. And then what they do is they take the product, I mean take the barrels, and they put them in our country's landfills. Because federal law states you may only use the barrel one time. And so an example would be, this is a jalapeno barrel. This is a marinated vegetable barrel. We've got cauliflower barrels. We've got Greek olive barrels. We've got pickle barrels. They all come in to the United States. They're dumped. They sit in the brine. And then after they sit in the brine, they go ahead and they put them in the little jars that say, distributed by Mount Olive Pickle Company, distributed by Velasic, distributed by Giuliano's. So what we do is we get these barrels, we retrofit them, and we give them a second life. And therefore, we're keeping them out of our country's landfills. So that's what we do. And so Ryan started his little business because all the neighbors would come and ask about his rain barrels. And he would explain he made them and he would go ahead and start making them for the neighbors. Well, one day we were up at a local nursery and the man said, you know, Ryan went up to him and said, do you have any barrels, rain barrels? And the guy said, yes, I do. And so Ryan went over and looked at him and the man said, you know, son, would you like to buy one of these for your mama? And Ryan stood there this little kid, there he is with his rain barrel. And he goes, sir, I don't mean to be impolite, but I make a much better rain barrel than you're selling. And I'm like, oh, apologize, apologize. Anyways, the man chuckled, and he asked Ryan what was wrong with his barrel. And Ryan proceeded to explain it. Well, the man said, okay, how much would you sell me if I wanted three barrels. And they made a handshake, gentleman's handshake. And Ryan came home and he enlisted the help of his twin sister. And they made this gentleman three rain barrels. And like the kids in uh, Huntington Beach that drive their surfboard behind their bicycles, Ryan dragged his rain barrels behind his bicycle and took it up to the local nursery. Well, before he even got home, I got a phone call. Mrs. Berglund, this is Mr. Roberts. You know those barrels that your son brought over? I said, yeah. He goes, well, I said, is something wrong? And he said, well, no, nothing's wrong. He goes, I just want, they're sold. I just want 18 more. <laughs> and I'm like, so that is how the rain barrel company started. And Ryan started making them for the summer in the garage with his twin sister. And I was working as a sales and marketing director for Epson Printers. Now, here I am working for Epson Printers, and I cannot keep up with Ryan's little orders. So I said to my husband, what am I going to do? I can't keep up with his orders. And my husband said, well, how many do you have to make in a week to make your paycheck? And I said, 33. And he said, well, okay, if you can make 33, then you can quit your job. And I said, well, guess what? I have orders for 264. 
I said, so I guess I'm quitting my job. So since 2006, I've been working for my 12-year-old son, Ryan. <laughs> That's the story of how the Rain Barrel Company started. Now, we're in 172 stores in 19 states, and we employ 43 people, and that's what we do. We make rain barrels. Okay, so let's go on with what is rainwater harvesting. Rainwater harvesting is capturing rain coming off the rooftop of your home, going down the gutter, and then collecting it in a rain barrel. Now, that all sounds great, but I want you to all remember me when, when it's raining outside because everyone says it doesn't ever rain in California. And you're right, okay? It doesn't rain in California. So what we're trying to do is get people to think of ways that you can conserve water in your home without it raining. And that way you can have the water and it's water that you've paid for that's just potentially going down the drain of your house. So what we're trying to do is get people to think about ways that they can conserve in, the, in their home. Now, I want you all to remember, because all of you that want to buy rain barrels, you are being proactive and you're being prepared and you're going to set them up in your yard so that when it does rain, you don't say, oh gosh, I wish I had a rain barrel. How do I get a hold of that lady? And then you find out that I don't sell to the general public. Okay, I only sell to events like this one, which are municipality events, or we sell to the retail stores. Our rain barrels in the retail stores go from 149 to 169. Okay, an event such as a municipality or event or an event set up set up by Sustainable Claremont, those barrels go for $65 plus tax. And then we show you how to apply for the rebate so it even brings the price of the barrel to a much more reasonable amount of money. So what we try to do is educate people. So when, remember when I said you're going to think of me. Okay, here's the, the dance. It's raining, it's pouring, the rain barrel business is soaring because that's what happens when it starts to rain. Everybody all of a sudden wants a rain barrel. Okay, but it doesn't rain that much in California. So how can we conserve in our own home? That's the key. So in a quarter of an inch of rain, your rooftop, those barrels are gonna fill up in about 40 to 45 minutes. In just a quarter of an inch of rain, they'll fill up very, very quickly. Okay, so with that being said, has anybody ever washed their hair in rainwater? Yes, it's very silky, it's very smooth, nice and, now I'm not saying you should all wash your hair in rainwater, but it doesn't have any harmful bacteria or dissolved salts or minerals or anything like that. So I do bathe my dogs in the rainwater and their fur gets nice and silky, that I do. And of course, the rainwater, you've got it coming down, and we all know that after it rains outside, your grass looks so green and so pretty because there, you know, rainwater is just natural. There's not a lot of chemicals in it or anything like that, so it's very beautiful. Now, I get people that say, oh, I heard that rainwater, we can't capture rainwater. It's illegal, okay? It's not illegal to capture rainwater. The last state in the United States was Colorado, and last July they voted on the fact that you can, it was on their, their uh, uh, books that you couldn't collect rainwater because the rainwater belonged to the state. Okay, well now that has been changed. Everyone can collect rainwater, okay? So that's a real important key. Now, I always show this picture here. And the reason why I show this picture here is, has anybody ever been to Coldwater Canyon Park up on Mulholland Drive in Beverly Hills? Okay, yeah. Okay, well at that park there, they've got this beautiful display of our rain barrel, and they talk about how you can collect rainwater off your rooftop. Now, they've got all types of displays there at uh, the Tree People, is the, is, that's where their headquarters is. And they've got all kinds of displays on ways that you can conserve with pavers and things like that and, and be proactive as far as saving water on your property. But I always show this picture because um, the way they have it set up is incorrect. And I think that that's really important that people realize that um, they don't need to put that many blocks on the barrel, okay? Um, 
When you're setting up a rain barrel, the key importance is that the ground is level. The very most key importance, okay? Um, so if they had had this ground level right here, okay, nice and solid and compacted, all they would need would be these two cinder blocks right here. And we recommend that you put two cinder blocks side by side and lay them down. And then you can just go ahead and put the barrel on top of that. Now, the reason why we put the cinder blocks, there's several reasons. Number one, we put the barrel five inches from the bottom, okay? So if you're putting the barrel five inches from the bottom, can you all see this faucet right here? Okay, if you're putting the barrel five inches from the bottom, then you can't get a bucket underneath. The barrel's not high enough, and it's awkward to get that barrel, that bucket underneath. And you're getting the bucket because you either want to water by hand, you know, with a bucket, or maybe you want to attach your garden hose. But if it's that low, it's going to kink, okay? So if you raise it up on two cinder blocks, eight inches, then what's going to happen is you've got enough height there to go ahead and easily attach a garden hose without it kinking, or you can just easily put a bucket underneath and turn on your faucet. Okay, so that's why we suggest you put just two cinder blocks. Now, you don't need to have all of this. It, it really is kind of overkill. But if you are going to put the barrel on two cinder blocks, and let's say your cinder blocks are on grass, okay, you're going to have to cut that out because that grass is going to make the barrel unstable. Okay, so it needs to be solid, stable. Some people put pea gravel and stuff like that. I don't necessarily do that. I just, dirt is fine. I just nice, solid, packed dirt, two cinder blocks side by side. Then what you're going to do is you're going to put your elbow on the top of the barrel right here. And in this general vicinity of your wrist, that is where you're going to cut your gutter. Now, how many of you have gutters on your property? Okay, let's ask a question. Who doesn't have a gutter on their property? Okay, we're going to talk to you in a moment, okay? But the easiest thing to do, if you don't have a gutter on your property, or let's say you do have a gutter on your property, the easiest thing to do is where your roof comes together in a point, okay, a P. That's where the water always runs off, okay? So what we're asking you to do is, at that point, take a chain. Now, any kind of chain would work. You can take what they call a rain chain, which is a, this is a miniature rain chain. I cut it, I didn't want to carry it. But this is a rain chain. You can buy this at like Tuesday mornings or at uh, Target sells it, their Smith & Hawkins brand. They charge $29 for it. Or you can buy them online and they're a lot more expensive. They have holes inside of them and so the water will come in. It kind of gets a little tingly, tangy sound and it's pretty. You can see the water go down and then you can just go ahead and put the rain chain right here and it's just going to overflow right into the barrel. So you can do it that way where the roof peak top comes down, the water comes down. Some of it goes in your gutter. Majority of it does, but a lot of it when you're getting a good downfall will overflow. So you can put that rain chain right there, hook it to your gutter, Okay, the water goes down, and then you just find where the chain is, and you put the barrel right there. Okay, real easy. If you don't want to use a rain chain, like let's say you don't want to spend $29, you can go over to Home Depot or Lowe's and get a four-foot stainless steel chain. Okay, any kind of chain will work. A matter of fact, I had somebody over <coughs> at my class the other day in Pasadena that came with a chain from a Halloween store and it was a plastic chain. And she said it worked just great. It was just a plastic chain that she just hung off of her uh, fascia, off her roof, and it, the water came down. So what I try to tell people is it's important that the ground is level. That is the key importance. Now, if you're going to go ahead and build yourself a stand, the water, the barrel right now only weighs 15 pounds, so it's very easy to lift and move around. But when it's full, it's going to be over 400 pounds. So with that, it's not like you're going to go ahead and wheel it around your yard with a dolly, 
okay? So wherever you put the barrel is where the barrel is going to stay, okay? Now, what I tell people is put a couple cinder blocks down, put your elbow on top, go ahead and use a hacksaw and cut your gutter in your wrist forearm area, okay? Then you're gonna take your gutter piece out and at the bottom of your gutter piece, you're going to find this piece right here, okay? This is your angle. You just take the gutter out and unscrew this. This is the piece that's at the bottom right down here on the ground. You unscrew that, you put it right where you just cut your gutter and you push it up and let the water just fall into the barrel, okay? I don't put it inside the barrel, I don't touch this because if you do wanna take the lid off, it gets difficult to take the lid off. But just go ahead and let the water fall in. Now they do sell diverters. Diverters are what you use to attach inside your gutter. And then the water, you can go ahead and attach the diverter from your gutter here and the water goes through your overflow. I don't particularly like them. And the reason why I don't like them is they tend to get leaves in them and clog the leaves up. And then what happens is the leaves start to clog up and they always tend to break your gutter on the top. So I go the inexpensive route. The inexpensive route is just take your gutter, cut the gutter, take the piece off at the bottom, stick it up there and let it fall in. Now, if you've got, does anybody have a um, pipe underground? Okay, so if you've got a pipe underground, they do sell caps for those. You can put the cap on top, drill a three-quarter inch hole, and then you just attach a garden hose and put it inside. And that way it just goes directly underground and it doesn't change. But what we would really like to do is have you keep the water on your property. So what we recommend to people is attaching a garden hose to the barrel and that way, pulling the garden hose away from the foundation of your house, okay? Now, we really are uh, picky because we'd like it to be a 25 to 50 foot garden hose because we don't want mosquitoes to go up the garden hose, okay? So if it's a long enough garden hose, now if you just use a five foot section, mosquitoes are going to go up that garden hose, okay? So if you lose a long garden hose, the, it's raining outside, the barrel is full. The barrel is going to overflow. I had a client the other day who asked me, how do I make it stop? You know, really, okay? So with that being said, the barrels will overflow. Okay, you can do several things. One, I recommend that you always attach a garden hose, a nice long garden hose to it and pull it away from the foundation of your house. And that way, the water will soak into the ground table because that's what we want. We want it to soak into the ground table and not run off into the street, okay? We want the water to stay on your property. So that's what we would do. So one of the things I show people, let me go here. This is the big red X. This is what we're trying to avoid, okay? This is what it would look like if you had a rain chain. This is a homemade rain chain, okay? And there's your rooftop, of course, and then this is what it would look like if it's catching rain, okay? So the water's gonna go in. You may get some leaves going in. It's okay. You can always just wipe them off. Now, people ask me, do I ever take the lid off and clean my barrel? Um, I do not. I don't ever, if my neighbor wants to go, oh, look at your barrel's dirty inside, you know? I don't ever clean my barrel. I don't ever take my lids off. Because the moment you take your lid off, now mosquitoes and, and gnat bugs can get in, okay? So we're very particular. I always leave my lid on. The barrel will get a little algae buildup in it. It's okay. Also, if you have a tar roof, the tar particles will go into the netting here and then they'll float down to the bottom. I think that's okay, and the reason is because it becomes like blacktop. What will happen is it, it, gets, it binds together and it gets real solid, so the bottom of the barrel is gonna have like a black blacktop at the bottom. But that's okay, and the reason why it's okay is it gives the 
barrel a little weight. You need that weight because here in Southern California, you guys get Santa Ana winds. And you don't want to have to have your barrel roll to your next door neighbors and you have to go pick it up over there. So it's always to good to keep a little bit of water and that tar at the bottom of your barrel. Okay, um, I, so like I said, I don't ever clean my barrels. It, you know, if you choose to clean it, we suggest you use Simple Green. It's biodegradable. It will not hurt your plants. And so you can go ahead and clean it out with Simple Green, and then you know you can go ahead and use it again. But like I said, I don't ever take my lid off the barrel. Um, real quickly here. Okay. All right, so the benefits of a rain barrel. Um, besides conserving a vital natural resource, one of the things that I'm really big on rain barrels, people talk about using rain barrels for their gardens, okay? And ideally, that would be the perfect thing, is to use it, the rainwater for your garden. But I use it for a lot of cleaning around my house, okay? One of the biggest things we do to waste water in our home, remember I mentioned that um, we're gonna give you some helpful hints on ways to conserve water in your own home without it raining, okay? One of the biggest ways that we waste water in our home is in the shower every morning, okay? So the water is going down the drain and you've all paid for it. So what we are suggesting is that you take a bucket, like a one gallon bucket, stick it in your shower, okay? And turn the water on, go brush your teeth or whatever. By the time the water is filled, um, starting to get warm, turn the bucket, close the bucket, take the water and at least use it to flush your toilet with it, use it for your plants in your home, or preferably pour that water in your barrel. If you've got four people in your home taking showers, by the end of the week the barrels are full and it didn't even rain outside, okay? And that's just water that we're wasting that's just going down the drain. Another thing that you can consider would be using like a Rubbermaid, those little square Rubbermaids that you put inside your sink and while you're washing your vegetables or you're rinsing off your uh, plates, you know, before you put them in the dishwasher, use that water and then take that and pour it in your barrel, okay? It's dirty water, but it's, gonna, it's not gonna matter. It's, it's not gonna be a big deal, you know? And you're saving it and you're not wasting it. That's what's really, really important. We're trying to not waste water. Now, um, I use it to divert water from, you know, our municipal uh, storm drains, but also we're reusing a product that would otherwise be going in our country's landfills. Um, we are using less energy, and um, it's, an example would be every one of these rows has 200 barrels in it. We get 900 barrels in our plant in Raleigh, North Carolina each week and we get 150 barrels each week from Giuliano's. Um, they have a plant in Bloomington, which isn't too far from here, and then they also have a plant in Garden Grove, and we get these barrels from them. We clean them, we retrofit them, and give them another life, and then that way, you know, we're saving water on people's property. Now, one of the things I tell people is they've got some scratches and minor blemishes. Um, I think it gives it character. <laughs> That's what I try to tell people. But if you'd like to clean them and make them look really, really pretty, you can just go ahead and take some baby oil. I used to do that. I used to shine them up with baby oil. And then one day a client said, you know, I wish you wouldn't do that because we slide it into the back seat of our car when we take them home and we get baby oil all over the back seat of our car. So I stopped shining them. That's up to you. But you can use baby oil to shine them up and it will take the scratches away and it looks really pretty. Uh, and they'll, they'll look really nice. Or you can go ahead and buy a new barrel, not from us, but like from Costada and some of the new barrels on the market. Um, they run about $259. And so we try to get people to, to think that, you know, gosh, you can get three or four of our barrels for the same price as one. Okay. So... Possible uses of rainwater. I use it for washing my kids' hands and feet before they come into the house. 
I use it for cleaning like my window ledges, my windows outside. I use it for my garden, for plants in my garden. Um, I use it to wash my dogs. I use it even, uh, Petco even sells a dog lick that you can attach a dog lick and a dog can lick on it and he can get water. So you can use it for many, many reasons, many purposes, but I mostly use it for not only gardening at my property, but for cleaning. That's a really important factor. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about our rain barrels. Um, this part right here, sorry there. This part right here is what we call our overflow. So when the barrel is full, we want to make sure that you're going to attach a garden hose to this and pull it away from the foundation of your house. Now, if you lose this little piece right here, you can get it at Home Depot or Lowe's for $1.15, or you can just take the cap to your liter water bottle, okay? And that will just screw right on. So if you lose that. Now, remember, if you leave the barrel like this, mosquitoes are going to get in the barrel. Now, the next thing about our barrel that we do is we put a collar and we use what they call a no seam netting. All right, they're very difficult to find. And a no seam netting is, have you all heard those about no seams? They're, they're like the, the bugs that you don't see and they still bite the hell out of you. Okay, yeah, no seams, you don't see them. They're black flies or little black gnat bugs. We get them a lot in the South. Okay, so it's an, we use a no seam netting. The weave is a tighter weave. It's an 18 by 18 inch weave versus a mosquito netting because mosquitoes can't get in a mosquito netting, but gnats can. They're smaller. So that's why we use the no seam netting. We silicone it on and we rivet it on because I don't want it to fall into the barrel. A lot of my competitors' barrels, they just lay them across the top of the barrel. Or some of them don't even use a netting, and then you're just gonna have mosquitoes in it. So we don't, we use the no CM netting. On the inside, we use brass faucets on our barrels, and a lot of people ask me what this little metal piece is right here, okay? This metal piece is so that when you lean on the barrel, and you're leaning on the barrel, the faucet doesn't pop out. It gives it a little bit of stability there. And that way, we silicone the faucet in three spots. One here, one inside here, and then inside there's a bushing. And that bushing is siliconed as well. So that way the barrels do not leak. Now people ask us about our warranty. Our warranty is a 30-day warranty. However, I had to legally say I had a warranty. We'll replace the barrels. We get thousands of them. So if you have a problem such as your husband backed up and drove into the barrel, please call me and I will replace it because you know what? Your garbage man won't take it, okay? So it's just going to become a, you know, rack for your, you know, lawn equipment, you know, your rakes and things like that. We don't want that. We really want you to use it as a rain barrel. Okay, so with that being said, our warranty is as long as um, pretty much you guys want a lifetime warranty in the sense that, let's be realistic, but we replace them. I would much rather replace them than have it you not use your rain barrel. And it's very important that if you stick your rain barrel in the middle of the yard, it will not collect It will not collect rainwater. Uh, it will go ahead and just sit in your yard, but it won't collect very much rainwater. You've got to have it coming down the spout from your house. So if you have a gutter on your home, that would be the fastest, easiest way to collect water from your gutter. Now, we use the no seam netting we talked about. We silicone it on the inside. We use a brass faucet and we use the um, standard garden hoses. So let's talk about standard garden hoses. How many of you own the green hose? The green hose at your house? Everybody's got a green hose? The little cheap green hoses that they bend? 
No? Yeah, okay, some people are nodding at me. Okay, we would prefer you to use a good, solid rubber hose like this, okay, that doesn't bend in half. Because if you use the green hoses, they flip in half like this, and when they flip in half, they break down on the inside. So what will happen is you'll be standing there and you'll be saying, gosh, hardly any water's coming out. Okay, and it's because the hose is a, most likely a green hose that has kinked and then on the inside it has collapsed. Okay, so we suggest use a good strong hose. You can get them at Home Depots or Lowe's, but a good solid hose, okay? Now, you can connect two barrels together. I don't recommend that you do it from the top because if you do it from the top to the second barrel top, most of the time the second barrel is empty, okay? What we would like you to do is get what they call a Y connector, okay? You can get these at your standard stores. You can even get a cheap one at the 99 cent store, okay? You get a Y connector and you go ahead and you screw it into your faucet at the bottom. Then after you screw it into the faucet, we suggest that you take just a standard garden hose about 22 inches and you can go ahead and attach two female connections, okay? That way you attach it here you attach it down here, and then you attach the second one to the barrel, the second barrel. And that way the barrels are filling up from the bottom up, okay? That way you always have water in the second barrel and it's filling up and you're not utilizing your overflow hose. Because if you t get rid of the overflow hose, then the barrel's just gonna overflow and run it, the water out into the street, whereas we'd, again, like you to attach a garden hose to it. Now, people ask me, can I run a sprinkler? The answer is no. It will not be powerful enough to run a sprinkler. You can purchase a submersible pump. Harbor Freight sells them for about $29, and you can drop the pump inside, okay? Attach a garden hose, and then you're gonna go ahead and use the, the sprinkler that way, or you can use the the, uh, what do they call it, the power hose thing with your, with your uh, attached to the end of your hose, um, your sprayer, you can use it that way. Um, you've got about 10 minutes with a standard pump, so else you're gonna drain the barrel out. Now, if you're gonna stand and do it by hand, it's gonna take you about two hours by hand to empty the whole barrel. Okay, but if you want to go ahead and drop a submersible pump in, um, my husband always was saying to me, gosh, you know, you can't buy any more submersible pumps. It's because, I, you know, in our lives we get busy and the phone rings and this is going on and the kids and whatnot. And you remember I said you have 10 minutes. Well, I always come out 30 minutes later and I hear the pump going, <coughs> it's because I burnt it up, you know. So you've got 10 minutes. So yes, you can wash a car, but you better be fast. Okay, um, last but not least, standing with the hose like this, it will be a good amount of water coming out. You, your, your sprayer is your thumb, okay? We're going the natural method. That's how you're gonna spray. And again, one of the biggest questions, well, I've got my garden over there, it's up on the hill, okay? You're not gonna have any water going uphill, okay? Water flows down. All right, so I, um, our barrels, they're $65 plus tax. And let's go on to the mosquito section. So I'm gonna go ahead and introduce Carol Ann to you. She's from the San Gabriel Vector Control District, which is this district here. And she's gonna talk to you a little bit about the major mosquito problem that Southern California is having. So Carol Ann. Is that working? Point it a little bit. There we go. How's that? All right. So my name is Carol Ann Hagley. I'm the Education Specialist at the San Gabriel Valley Mosquito and Vector Control District. 
And Claremont is definitely in our jurisdiction. So some of you may have seen our trucks driving around or perhaps they even gave us a call. Um, basically, we take care of all the public areas. Um, and we will come if you call because you've had problems with mosquitoes. But um, other than that, we don't um, oversee private property. Um, that is pretty much the purview of the, uh, the um, resident, and you're responsible for what's going on on your property. Um, rain barrels, please follow all of her instructions because um, people who don't end up with a barrel full of mosquitoes, and that's miserable. Um, so if you follow all our instructions, make sure there is no way that mosquitoes can get in. Um, you should be fine. Uh, I don't know if, if something happens to the screen, it's really important to get that hole um, covered up. So whether you have some kind of patch no, ideas. Just, just call us. We'll replace the screen right away. Yeah. Right. Yes. Because sometimes in these storms, you know, we get um, stuff coming down the gutter that could possibly damage the screen. Just as soon as you see a hole, um, it needs to get patched up. Um, mosquitoes are aquatic creatures. The only time they're terrestrial is when they're adults. Um, so they spend the majority of their time in the water. The eggs are laid either directly on the water or around the edge. Um, those eggs hatch within a day or so. Within a couple of days, they've gone through all of their larval um, in stars or stages, um, which is it's the same kind of uh, life cycle that mosquitoes have or that butterflies have. So it's a, a four part um, life cycle. And then they pupate within um, three or four days after hatching. And then within a day or two, they're emerging as, as um, adult mosquitoes. So half of those, the females, are going to be um, feeding off of some sort of um, either animal or person, just kind of depending on the species and, and what's available. Um, we have a local species of mosquitoes, the Culex mosquitoes, that are capable of, of carrying West Nile virus. Um, and we have had, unfortunately, some cases of West Nile this summer. Uh, we also now, pretty much every single city in our jurisdiction has these invasive Aedes mosquitoes. Um, and these are the tropical mosquitoes that can carry Zika, Dengue, Chikungunya, um, yellow fever. Uh, primarily what you'll see in backyards are the Asian tiger mosquitoes, but we also are seeing more and more um, backyards with 80s, the um, Aegypti, which is the yellow fever mosquito. So um, very, very important to make sure that you follow all the directions um, with your rain barrel as far as just keeping everything closed, making sure that it's in good condition, that the screen is intact, um, the lid's on, that you haven't left anything open, um, and attach the appropriate length hose because these mosquitoes are very determined and they will fly up a shorter hose. So nice long hose um, and just, you know, follow all the instructions. Rain barrels are just one place in a backyard. Mosquitoes are pretty much anything that will hold water and, and keep it from draining away or evaporating is going to eventually result in mosquitoes growing there. They absolutely have to have water um, to complete their life cycle. And unfortunately, it doesn't take very much. We have found conditions where um, we've had 100 baby mosquitoes growing in bottle caps that were pressed into the ground and just hit by, by the sprinkler every day. And the water, as long as the water stays there long enough for them to complete their life cycle, then it's considered a source. So um, just as you're moving through your backyard and through your routine, uh, um, gardening routine, just kind of keep your eye out. Even those big magnolia leaves will hold water. Bromeliads, traveler's palms, all of those have a leaf structure that 
um, tightly adheres to the main part of the plant and water can be trapped in those leaves and then pretty soon you're gonna have mosquitoes. The bromeliads in particular, if you got bromeliads, please keep them in the pots and not put them in the ground because um, you just have to treat them like a bucket. They need to get dumped out once a week and rinsed out and um, just to remove any larvae that are growing in those. So um, rain gutters, uh, that feed into the system. Don't forget they can get clogged up and then when the leaves are trapping water, you can get quite a bit of water above and out of sight, out of mind, and you think, where are all these mosquitoes coming? Must be the neighbor. And then you get up on your roof and go, oh my gosh, you know, you've got a whole bunch of water trapped in your, in your, so it's really important to maintain all those gutters as well and make sure that all the leaves and the dirt um, are removed from those so the water can flow freely um, into your rain barrel. Um, and then, of course, as she said, you know, you want to make sure that you don't have water sitting on top. So that's why it's important to drain it so the water is down below the level of the screen. Um, so just follow all her instructions. We're, we, we love to partner with um, Rain Barrels International because they are very much aware of mosquitoes. Um, any other questions about mosquitoes or, yes? Can they grow in a bird bath? They can grow anywhere and bird baths are a real common place for them to grow. Um, uh, but pretty much anything that's gonna hold water and, and trap it for long enough, it needs to get a, um, a certain level of bacteria and algae, but it doesn't take much. And I, we have a citizen science program and sometimes the kids will, pull water from somewhere and it looks absolutely crystal clear and when you get them under the microscope and you can see the first instar mosquito larva wiggling through it. So it doesn't, it won't look dirty, but um, apparently there's enough of a bacteria load in there to, to support um, developing mosquitoes, yes. Uh, if, you, if you have a question, please raise your hand. I'll bring you the microphone because you're recording this and if we don't use the microphone, it won't. Record properly. Okay. Uh, if you get mosquitoes in your rain barrel, you've done something wrong. Is there anything you can do to treat it and kill them, or do you have to dump it? Um, you can go to a gardening store and um, or any of the um, home improvement stores and pick up uh, a mosquito dunk or um, it's basically a dry uh, cake. It looks like a really horrible little donut. Um, and it's, it's a bacteria that it specifically attacks aquatic stages of mosquitoes and you can put that in there. Now, having said that, um, sometimes these products will sit in a warehouse for a long, long time before they get moved. And sometimes they will sit on the store shelf for a long time. They do have a shelf life. So um, if you, yeah, so if you put the BTI in there, you just want to not assume that it's going to work. Um, sometimes you'll get a bad batch. Um, but that is, that is the, that's what we use to kill the larval mosquitoes. So no, you don't have to. If you find, oh my gosh, I left it for three nights and there's, you know, eggs have been laid in there, go ahead and cap everything up because they won't be able to get out. Um, so you can, and then if you dispense them out into the garden, they're just gonna go onto the dirt or a hard surface or onto the lawn and the water will soak in and they'll die. A lot of people think mosquitoes, you know, if it's the lawn is wet enough, they can survive. They can't. They have to have a, a small amount of free water to move around in. So if you, de if you decant them off into the garden or onto the, um, the dirt or the grass, it will kill them. And then the ants will say, yay. So, <laughs> um, yes, he's good. I was just going to ask about uh, water features in the yard. Uh -huh. uh, a lot of people will have circulating, so yep. moving water. How fast does the water have to move in order to discourage the mosquitoes? It doesn't have to move very fast at all now. Mosquitoes generally won't move into a swimming pool that has water circulating and has the, um, 
the proper chemicals in it. Um, having said that, sometimes people will have ponds where the water is circulating, but if there are plants that create pockets where the water is still, then you'll see mosquito larvae in those little pockets. And we do um, provide mosquito fish for people that have um, ponds and, and need um, some sort of predator to, to eat. We do have the little mosquito fish. Um, but uh, generally with the water features, what we recommend is that you don't leave them running 24-7 because then you'll get black flies, those little buffalo gnats that have the nasty bite as well. And they survive in the um, pump filtration system and in areas where the water's flowing across the walk. You'll see the, um, if you have a, maybe a little waterfall or something, sometimes you'll see these little black grubs that show up on the rocks. Those are black flies. And so the, the the remedy for that is to just turn the pump off and you let everything stop flowing for about 24 hours once a week. That'll kill the black flies, but it's not long enough for the mosquitoes to grow. So it's kind of a little balancing act, but it actually, you don't really need to go out and buy anything if you, if you kind of understand sort of the basic biology and you just make sure that they either, if they get in, don't let them back out again. Um, and that they have certain requirements. So mosquito needs still water, no movement. Black flies need flowing water. And you had a question. Uh, yeah, I've had 80s mosquitoes in the yard this year, oh. and um, you know, there are no seams. Yes, you know, they're very small. Yeah, biting my legs, wore pants, and they're biting the backs of my arms yeah. when I'm working in the yard. And I noticed they, they tend to be in kind of darker, shadier, cooler areas. And I was initially thinking that I had a water source there, but, you know, and I didn't. And the neighbor swears on the other side of the fence that he doesn't. Are they, are they going to those areas for a reason? Do they know that I work on my side yard a lot? Or, or? No, mos um, mosquitoes generally try and stay out of the sun, even the invasive 80s, which are a tropical mosquito that's much more tolerant. Um, but they will tend to rest in shady, cooler areas. And so you walk up there and they're resting there and they just, you know, it's just providence for them. They are fence hoppers. They don't fly long distances, but they um, sometimes the areas that they're emerging from, there's no resting areas for the adults. Um, so they will, they will move to an area, and it might be somebody else's yard, um, and that's where they'll rest. So if you happen, if that's a place where you happen to be working, you know, then yeah, they'll, they'll definitely uh, take advantage of that situation. So any other questions? Um, I just want to encourage people to just know that the, the, the two basic things, mosquitoes must have water. So you know, you gotta have a zero tolerance for any kind of exposed sitting water. And the other thing is that we are strongly urging people to please, please use repellents of some sort. Um, if you get onto our website, and we have our literature here, there's an 80s um, booklet, and then we've got some marine barrel flyers. Um, type our URL in, get into the about repellents, and there's four um, active ingredients in repellents that are recommended by Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Um, so when you're shopping for a repellent and you think, I really don't like DEET, there are other options. There's even a botanical oil of lemon eucalyptus, which is very effective against mosquitoes. Um, there's a lot of other things that are out there. Avon Skin So Soft and some of the others um, that are botanicals, they'll last for a while, um, but generally once they evaporate after 15, 20 minutes, then their efficacy drops off. So um, if you really can't tolerate any of the big four, um, then you're gonna have to apply or cover and cover up. So long sleeves, um, long pants, socks, you know, I have a head net that's treated, I got it from uh, a sporting goods store, and that's what I garden in just to keep all the biting flies off of me. 
So I live up on Lytle Creek and everything's up there. <laughs> so, yeah. The mosquito fish that you mentioned, do yes. they need supplemental food or, or will they have enough? Um, like if yeah, it kind of depends on the what you put them into. If you put them into a new system, then definitely you'll have to um, feed them. And goldfish flakes are, are fine for them. Um, if you're putting them into a system that's already full of a lot of um, gnat larvae and, and mosquito larvae, then you probably don't have to feed them as much. But I would just, just to make sure you're supporting them. And sometimes you'll end up with more mosquito fish than you know what to do with. <laughs> but it's better, like, if you have a big, huge rain collector to cap it off in the ways that were described yeah, earlier absolutely. and only use the fish for like, yeah, ponds Yeah, the fish, and things. generally, we use them for ponds and, and func fountains that aren't functioning anymore and they, you know, just can't be fixed. Um, and they're deep enough, we can put the mosquito fish in there. So. I have right. a question. Yes. Uh, uh, some of our plants are in a pot that sits in a tray, and I tend to put water in the tray so the plant will be uh, watered for a longer period. Right. <clears throat> and I wondered, and you've probably already answered this, but I wondered how long we should limit the water standing in that little tray. A couple of days. Um, where you get into trouble with that is, you know, we all get busy and we forget. And then you're like, oh my gosh, you know, all of a sudden you've got mosquitoes everywhere. I mean, it can blow up on you really fast. Okay, um, someone had a really clever idea with the, um, they would take strips of terry cloth, like an old towel, and they just kind of run it underneath the pot and over the edges. And the water will stay there for a while, but eventually that terry cloth strip will wick that water away. Um, and that'll help it go away a little bit faster. But Generally, these days, we are, because of the health risks, we're really recommending people actually eliminate those trays altogether and just try and put in a plant potting soil that will hold the water and keep the roots moist longer. So you can still cut back on the watering, but uh, you know, just mulch everything well. And um, like I, I put in some tomatoes and I put a nice big thick layer of mulch so I only have to water them once a week. Thank you. So there's all sorts of solutions. <laughs> Anybody else have a question? I have a barrel question. Yeah. Uh, my son has a pump he uses in the bathroom, and he pumps the water, for instance, out of the bathtub into a barrel. Uh, is that uh, you know, going to cause problems? No. No. And yes, you can do that. Very few people do, but yes, you can. Um, you can take water from like your laundry and um, your, you know, your laundry. You can get biodegradable soap at Whole Foods or Trader Joe's and you can take water from your laundry. Um, that's how my father originally started doing rain barrels. He would use the water from his, his washer and dry, his washer. Um, but you know, we tell people if you're gonna give your child a bubble bath or something like that, get biodegradable bubble bath and you can go ahead and scoop it up with the bucket and go ahead and use it. But if he has a system where he's you know, pulling the water from the tub or from the shower, you know, he's just ahead of, it's basically a gray water system. And gray water systems are legal now here in California. And so um, if you replumb your home with a gray water system, you can go ahead and, and take water from your house plumbing as well. You know, and that's a whole, and they have rebates out there for gray water systems, just like they have rebates for rain barrels. Um, and that's kind of one of the things we'll go over here in a moment. I'd like to thank Carol Ann, but one of the most important things with rain barrels, we talked about fish. Um, we actually in the South have dropped goldfish inside like one goldfish and they're just happy as a clam in mud you know i mean they just are eating the little mosquitoes but again we're really really particular about following the rules that's why vector control works with us because we try to educate the public on the importance of if you've got rain and it's rained outside especially this lid here it's going to have two inches of water sitting on top after the rain's done please go outside, open up your faucet, drain it below the, the um, netting, 
okay? Again, this one won't have that much because of the style of barrel, but again, open up the faucet, drain it down, let it go, let it go below. Again, attach, don't ever leave these open. Attach a garden hose and pull it away from the foundation of your house. Your faucet down below, don't ever leave it open. You leave it open, you, you're gonna lose water, but you're gonna have a little water at the bottom and mosquitoes are gonna go in that way. Okay, so we all have to be proactive and smart about the importance of, we would like everyone to conserve water because let's face it, California is a desert. Okay, we, they say we're out of a drought, but we always have drought conditions here. So it's important that we would like people to save water, but we'd also like you to be smart about it. Most importantly, what California is trying, or Southern California is trying to do, is get people to get rid of just the bucket of water that the people are carrying around their house to save, you know, or the trash can that they're filling up with water when it rains, or they're trying to save water, and they're leaving water just standing on their property even in like hubcaps and things like that. I mean, just the smallest amount of water is going to get mosquitoes. So we're really trying to educate people on, yes, we want you to conserve water, but we want to do it correctly. And that way you're all thinking about, you know, how we're gonna avoid mosquitoes because it's a, it's a terrible issue and a terrible problem right now that Southern California is having. So anything else you'd like to say? I think that's Okay, a couple things I'd like to go over real quick with people. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so let's talk about, yeah, she's got some samples here of mosquitoes, which I think are really interesting. Um, they gave me some samples to take too, and so I take them in my classes. It's very interesting to actually see the mosquito under the, you know, because we always hit it and see the blood, you know? Uh, anyways, okay, so let's talk about rebates. Um, does anybody here live in Pasadena? No, I'm sorry, okay. <laughs> Only because Pasadena gives the biggest rebate. Okay, uh, actually Santa Monica gives the biggest rebate. They're giving a rebate of $200 per barrel, two per, of eight per household. So um, yes, it's $100 for the barrel and $100 for the installation, up to eight per household. Everyone in this area here qualifies with a rebate through the Metropolitan Water District. It's a $35 rebate per barrel, two barrels per household. Now, we're gonna talk about how the rebates work. Now, if you go to the rebate site, which is SoCalWaterSmart.com, Okay, and you don't have to write any of this down because everything is on all those pieces of paper at the table. So please make sure you take everything home so you can read it at a later date and you've got it there for you because everything I've talked about are on sheets of paper over here, okay, including mosquitoes and everything else. So SoCal Water Smart, that's where you're gonna find out about all the rebates that are being offered to you in your community, meaning uh, washers and dryers, um, cisterns, which are, cisterns are big rain barrels, anything over like 200 gallons, okay? Um, so they're offering rebates on cisterns, uh, they're offering rebates on controllers, smart controllers, so that when it rains outside, it turns off your sprinkler system. We've got some of the pictures over here as far as some of the smart controllers that are available out there. But please, everyone, go to SoCal Water Smart and just inform yourself about what rebates are out there because there's money to be given if you're trying to be smart about saving water in, in your home. So we want you to check that out. Now the rebates for rain barrels are $35 per rain barrel, two per household. Now here's the catch. You can only apply for the rebate one time. So what happens is I get people and they might buy a rain barrel and say, I'm gonna try it out. And then they go ahead and 90 days later, they call me up and they say, oh, I'd like to get a rain barrel. And I have to say, did you apply for the rebate? Oh yeah, I got my rebate, it was wonderful. And I have to say, well, I'm sorry, you can only get the rebate one time. So that means you've lost your rebate on the second barrel, okay? So two barrels per household, one time submission. It's a very easy way to submit, and the program actually works. It works so well that I guarantee that if you don't get your rebate from Metropolitan Water District, my company will give you the rebate. I've never had to do that. 
okay? It's a very good program. We've been doing it with Metropolitan Water District for the last three years. You can go ahead and apply online at SoCalWaterSmart.com, but let's say you don't like to do the computer. You can call their 888 number, and there it's 376-3314, and there you will get a live person after the recording. You'll get a live person who will take your information for you or from you. Now, and they'll complete the rebate for you, okay? So the way it works is that you answer your name, your address, your phone number, your email address. Most importantly, they want to know your account water bill. If you pay a water bill, you qualify for a rebate. Now, if you have a duplex and you pay two water bills, then you get two barrels for each water bill. Okay, if you have a rental property and you pay the water bill on the rental property, you get a rebate. But let's say the, your tenants pay the water bill, then the rebate is in their name, okay? Whoever gets the water bill is the person who gets the rebate. So this is a, a problem that people run into. Joe Smith buys the barrel. Kathy Smith is on the water bill. Okay, your rebate form, your receipt from our company must have the person's name on the water bill. Now, all they're gonna do is send you a letter saying, I'm sorry, you don't pay your water bill. And then you're gonna call me up asking me for a duplicate receipt. So what we want you to do is if you do wanna buy a rain barrel, make sure that the rain barrel is in the name of the person who buys the water, um, water, who's got the name in the water bill. Now, if you're uncertain, put both names, okay? But if you have inherited a property and your water bill is still in your deceased parent's name, then you're gonna need to switch it over, okay? We get that often, okay? So we wanna make sure, yes. We're in the unfortunate position of having our water supplied by the Golden State Water Company. That is correct. That is metropolitan, part of metropolitan. No, it isn't. Yes. It's oh, a it's private not. water company. It's a private water company. I guarantee it's a private is water really? company. We tried to take it over by eminent domain and okay. it cost us I'm, millions I'm sorry, of dollars. I thought Golden State was part of they, metropolitan. They are a member agency. They are a member agency. Yeah, and they are a member agency, so as a member agency, you do qualify for a rebate. Yeah, Good. yeah, Good. yeah. I, I apologize about that, but yes, if they, because they are a member agency, they do qualify for a rebate. Matter of fact, if you question if you have a rebate or not, I have a sheet here, right here, and this is every city in Southern California that qualifies for a $35 rebate. So verify, now what city are you in? Claremont, of course, well Claremont, yep, I got you right here. And Alamano PHJK, yep, it should be here. Yes, here we go, here's Claremont. So you, Claremont qualifies for a $35 Bingo. rebate, bingo. Okay, so if, you want, if you're uncertain, by all means go ahead and check this form here to make sure that you do qualify for the rebate. What other questions may we have? Any other questions? No other questions about rain barrels? Okay, very quickly, I do want to let people know um, we are selling the rain barrels here today. We have all four colors with us, the terracotta 51 gallon, terracotta 58 gallon, black 60 gallon and gray 60 gallon. We charge $65 a barrel plus tax. We take charge, a credit card, cash or checks, and the gentleman's outside. It's a form you just fill out, then we'll go ahead and take that. You'll receive an email from us tomorrow with a receipt. Metropolitan does require that it's a printed receipt. We can't give you a handwritten receipt. And on the receipt, it does require how many gallons the barrel is, who the rain barrel um, you know, company is. You, you can't just go ahead and make your own rain barrel and get a rebate. Now, if you choose to make a rain barrel yourself, we are happy to give you instructions on how you can make your own rain barrel. Okay, the only thing that we recommend is when you go to Craigslist, you're gonna see like blue barrels and white barrels 
uh, available on Craigslist, make sure you know the product that was inside the barrel, okay? Because these are food grade barrels. We know for a fact there was food in them. We don't want something that was a chemical that would go ahead and harm your property. Okay, but else if you have an old whiskey barrel or old wine barrel, we'd be happy to give you instructions on how to make the rain barrels. Um, the other thing too is that the food grade product that we use in this is not a sugar-based product because California is built on an ant farm and we don't sell you blue barrels because those are Marciano cherries and you're gonna call me because you have ants on your house, okay? So ants don't like brine. They, in the south, we, we sell all different colors barrels because we don't really have an ant problem. We got bugs the size of your fist, but we don't have ants. <laughs> okay, is there any other questions about rain barrels? Yes. <clears throat> so when we get to the ordering process here. Yes. Um, I'm, you mentioned that I think a quarter inch rainfall. Correct. Would fill, you know, depends upon the size in of the roof. In about 45 minutes, yes. What, uh, how many do you recommend or how many well, do you see typically satisfying? I mean, I, well, typically we sell two because that's what the rebate is. And that makes people feel comfortable. I mean, if the barrels are $65, and of course we've got California sales tax, but if the barrels are $65 and you're going to get a $35 rebate at $30, it's a, it's a worthwhile investment, okay? Um, but... Originally, Metropolitan used to give a $75 rebate for per household. They stopped that two years ago, okay, because of budgeting and things like that. But ideally, if you could put one on every corner of your home, that would ideally be the best. But at this point, cost of living wise, too, is what the rebate is for. So the majority of my clients purchase two, and a lot of times they'll, I tell people if you're uncertain, you have 60 days to apply for the rebate. So if you go to our website, which is rainbarrelsinternational.com, and you look under the events, um, an example is Thursday, I'm in Newport Beach, Saturday, I'm in Irvine, Sunday, I'm in, in Long Beach. I mean, we give classes. Last weekend I was in Arcadia. I mean, we give classes usually four to six a week. And with that being said, all the cities are working together. So with them working together, you don't have to live in the city to go and pick up your rain barrel and then go apply for the rebate. You're gonna apply for the rebate under the city you live under Metropolitan SoCal Water Smart. Um, and so all the cities, it's already set in the computer as far as what your rebate is. Okay, so you can pick it up in Irvine or you can pick it up at the Pomona Fairgrounds when we're there, you know, wherever we're at locally, whatever's closest to your home and most convenient. Yes. Any other questions? No? Seeing no hands. Thank you very much. Thank this you. Is really Thank you, fun. everyone. Appreciate it.